hi, this is Arise Cake Creations bringing you the sweeter side of life. Over the last few weeks I've been doing baking tutorials but I've had quite a number of inquiries about doing gum paste flowers. Um, if you haven't got access to a gum paste already or you're looking for a scratch recipe, I've actually done a gum paste tutorial which I will leave a link in the iCard, whichever side it is, or down in the description box below. So this is the flower that we'll be doing this week. It's a realistic rose. There'll be the main flower, the buds, and also the leaves as well. It's a really great one to get started with, really beginner friendly. So let's get started. All the equipment that's needed, I've listed in the description box below. For the stem of the rose, you will either need some florist wire or bamboo skewers. If you are going to use florist wire, you will also need some wire cutters. The florist wire will need to be 18 gauge, cut down to size. You will need three of them, and then it will need to be taped with some florist tape. For the rosebud, you can either use a styrofoam ball or gum paste. If you use gum paste, you will need to roll it into a teardrop shape, take the florist wire, add some glue to the tip, then insert it into the gum paste. You will need to allow this to dry overnight to make sure it's firm and hard before you can start your flower. With the foam ball, you will just need to have glue gun. Be careful when you use the glue gun because it gets very hot. Um, make a hole, take your skewer, insert some glue into that hole and then literally insert your skewer. Hold it there for a few seconds until it adheres and then you're good to go and you can use that straight away. So to condition your gum paste, just actually rub some of the Trex or vegetable shortening into your hands. Gently knead the gum paste. Um, I'm actually going to colour my gum paste. If you want to leave yours white, you can do. I'm just using a very, very light pink, um, which is actually by Sugar Flare. I think it's like a nude colour. Um, so I'm just gently going to knead that in so I've got a lovely pink colour to work with. For the cutters, you can either use um, specifically rose petal cutters or some teardrop cutters. They're roughly around about the same shape. Um, I've got a set of six here, but I'm only going to use the first three sizes. So the small, the medium, and then the larger one of that set. Lightly dust your surface with some corn flour. Begin to roll out your gum paste. If the surface of the gum paste is a bit sticky, you can actually dust it with some more corn flour, but don't, don't dust too much so you don't want the gum paste to dry out. And then just carry on rolling out your gum paste. You want to roll that out very, very thinly. You can see here that I've rolled um, out my gum paste really, really thinly. And when you actually hold it up to the light, you should be able to see your fingers or your hand behind it. To start the rose off, we're going to use the largest petal cutter. Literally cut that out, um, store away any excess gum paste into a Ziploc bag. Now this is really important. If you don't do this, then your gum paste will dry out. Um, place your petal onto a foam pad and literally um, thin the edges, but actually don't stretch it too long. Some people tend to stretch the petals too long. You actually want it to be more wider, so stretch it out from the sides. Brush some edible sugar glue all over the surface of the petal. Take your styrofoam ball and begin to attach the petal to it. Now, this can get a bit fiddly, but if you take your time, what you're trying to achieve here is basically like a tight swirl in the center just to get that rose bud started off. So if you keep following how I'm attaching it, then hopefully you should attach it correctly. Just keep adjusting it until you actually get there. Now 
Once your first petal is attached, it almost looks like a pointy hat um, on your styrofoam ball. Um, once that's done, then you're ready to get going and add in all the other petals. So for the first row of petals, we're going to use the smallest petal cutter. Again, have your fondant rolled out, then cut out three petals only of the smallest petal cutter. Do the same thing again um, by literally adding your petal to the foam pad and literally thinning the edges of the petal, but again, make sure that you make your petal more wider rather than longer. We are now going to use the viner as well. So place your petal into the viner, place it down into the viner, and then squeeze down, place the glue on the V part of the petal only. So this time you're not going to put the glue all over, just on that V part only. Begin to attach your petal. Now you want to make sure that you attach the petal just slightly higher than that first petal that's there, just ever so slightly higher. And then just gently ease it into place. Repeat the process for the other two petals. So thin the edges, vine the petals, add your edible sugar glue, and then attach it to your flower. Now, make sure that when you attach the other two petals, they need to be at the same level. They are exactly the same level as the first petal that you put on. So all of that first row will be one even level. For the next row of petals, the second row, we're going to use the middle cutter or the medium size cutter. This time you need to cut five petals. So cut out your five petals, but this time store them in your um, Ziploc bag. Um, so it allows you time to work on actually thinning the edges, getting it prepared in the vena, and then gluing on the edible glue um, ready to attach them. So you need to make sure that you attach the next petal where you left off. So we're actually going in a clockwise direction. So wherever you left off last, that's where you'll begin to glue your next petal. Um, literally place your petal about halfway um, to where the last petal ended. Now again, this row again needs to be slightly higher again. It's only ever so slightly higher. And attach your next petal and then continue in this same process of thinning the petals, petals into the vena, and then add in your edible glue and attach in your petals. So for the third row, we're going to use the largest size petal cutter, and this time we're going to cut out seven petals. Repeat the same process of thinning out your petals, ensuring that you make the petal more wider than longer. Vein in your petal in the silicone mold, ready for the next stage because it is slightly different. Now this time we're actually going to get a clean sponge. Now you could actually use a washing up sponge, which is what I'm using, but make sure you only have it for cake decorating or food purposes only. Um, and also a toothpick or a cocktail stick. So insert your toothpick and use your index finger to gently roll um, the edge so that we have a nice curve and you're going to do that on both sides. And then once you've done that, just take your ball tool and gently push down into the surface, just gently rub the surface so it creates a, a bit of a curve. We're then going to take a spoon and you're actually going to rest your petal so the actual curves of the edges is just resting on the edge of the top of the spoon and you'll let it set there for about 10 to 15 minutes to firm up before you actually glue it onto your flower. Repeat this process for all of the other six petals until you have all of your seven petals resting on your spoon, ready to be glued to your flower. So again, remember to start where you left off from gluing your last petal. So add some edible glue again to the V section, just the point section, just either side of the, the, the point, um, and then begin to attach your petal, just aligning your petal so that it's actually midway from where the last petal ended and gently squeeze 
underneath where the glue is to attach the petal. Now this time the petal needs to be just again slightly higher but this time the petal because it's slightly firmer will now start to fall slightly outwards so the flower is now just beginning to open outwards. Repeat this same process for all of the other six petals until all of your seven petals have been glued on. For the fourth row, you're going to use the large petal cutter again, but this time you need to cut nine petals. Do the same process that you did before for the seven petals. For the fourth row of petals, we're going to actually do them slightly lower so that they actually now are starting to look more open. Literally just place the glue as before onto the base and attach the petal underneath. For the leaves and the calyx, I've actually coloured up some um, gum paste already into green. Then I've got two methods to show you. So you can either use a cutter, a calyx cutter, or you just need five small um, balls, which are about the size of a small pea. Roll it into a teardrop shape. Take your ball tool and just flatten out that teardrop shape. Then take a toothpick and just randomly put lines in it. Do not overthink it, just put random lines in. If you actually look at a calyx on a rose, you'll see that they kind of separate slightly and they kind of have strands coming off them. You then need to just take it into your hands and just gently manipulate um, it so it just kind of separates out slightly place a slight bit of glue onto there and then just place it onto the flower one by one until all five of your calyx or sepals have actually been put onto your rose. So once you've actually attached all of your um, handmade calyx to your rose, just take a small ball of gum paste and actually pass it up through the uh, stamen of your um, rose. For the second method, um, if you have a calyx cutter, just roll out your gum paste, cut out your calyx, and then basically just thin the edges and you are actually in fact going to almost repeat the process as before but this time you will actually put the lines in with a toothpick like you did with the handmade um, calyx but this time you're actually going to um, take your ball tool and work from the tip of the calyx into the center and what it will do as you literally pass your ball tool through it just creates a slight curve do that for all five of them and then turn it over because then what that will do when you actually attach that to the rose, those um, calyx or that calyx will actually fall back slightly as you attach it. So place some glue onto it and then just gently slide it over the top of the stamen down onto the rose itself and then just use a toothpick just to gently manipulate that into place so it's fully glued down. Just flick up some of the edges so it makes it look lovely and natural. You'll do the same thing again with the small piece of gum paste rolled into a ball, almost like a teardrop shape for the larger flower, and then passed through the barbecue skewer and then down to the bottom and then rolled into shape. And again, I think this is actually called a receptacle. So you can actually see from that final flower how it's supposed to look. So for the rose leaves, we're actually going to use the first two petal cutters to actually get the, the leaf shape going to create a groove line so just literally roll and then where the groove is stop and then on the other side roll again create the groove position your petal cutter over the groove but now we're using it for a leaf cutter um, cut out your um, leaf and then begin to thin the edges as before on your foam pad 
Um, rose petal edges are actually quite jaggedy so what we're actually going to do to create that we're going to take the toothpick or a cocktail stick and just literally create lines again don't overthink it just create lines just on the very very edge of the um, leaf itself take your 28 gauge wire add a small amount of glue onto the wire itself if you had too much glue then just take off the excess on the back of your hand insert the wire but be very very careful so gently hold the petal in between your index finger and your thumb as you gently guide that wire through that ridge that you've created um, and then literally put it into your viner um, your leaf viner um, press down gently squeeze the base of the leaf next to the wire just to secure it and then just pinch the top so that you can create a bit more of a point on the top of the leaf so if you have a groove board, um, the process is actually going to be the same. The only difference is that you're going to roll your gum paste over the smaller grooves that are there, because you have two different sizes, but the smaller groove, roll the gum paste over that, and then take your petal cutter, and then cut out your leaves as before. You'll need one large leaf and then four small leaves take the large leaf and begin to secure your florist tape to the actual wire wrap it down so it comes down just a few um, about less than a centimeter then take the two next smallest petals now these need to be exactly the same height just slightly lower than the larger petal then wrap the florist tape round just go down a little bit further less than about a centimeter or so and then attach your two next leaves and continue winding your florist tape down. Then take some tweezers to gently open out the leaves. So you'll have two small leaves at the bottom, the next row will be two small leaves and then your larger leaf at the top. Just take your time to manipulate um, and get the leaves in the right place so that you can have a beautiful set of leaves for your rose. So I've gone ahead and dusted up um, my um, calyx and flower. If you want me to do a video on how to dust um, gum paste flowers, then please let me know. Um, so I just wanted to explain the difference between using a bamboo skewer or florist wire to make your stamen. Obviously with a bamboo skewer you're not going to be able to bend it, you can cut it down to size and then insert it into a posy pick into your cake. So there you have it, our rose is fully completed along with buds and also the leaves as well. Be sure to check out the gum paste recipe that is listed below and also other gum paste flowers that I've also made. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you do make this sugar flower, I'd really love to see it. So you can actually do hashtag Arise Cake Creations on Instagram to share it with me or share it over with me on Facebook as well. I upload new videos and tutorials weekly. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified when I upload any new content. I really appreciate you joining. Thanks for watching.